Hi, WA4MCM here from WA4MCM Kits. So today we're going to go through the calibration procedure for the GM102 SWR and watt meter. I've been getting a lot of requests from my customers to uh, provide better details on this. So we're going to go through the whole procedure as detailed in the assembly manual. Uh, first thing we're going to do is show how to set up the meter um, so that uh, the calibration procedure can be uh, performed. So stand by while I change the camera position so that we can get a better look at this. Okay, with this downward angle, you can see uh, the, the coaxial cable coming from the transmitter right here, going into the sensor's input section. And then from the output, we also have coax coming here, uh, plugged into a 50 ohm non-reactive dummy load. Make sure it's a non-reactive dummy load because uh, it, it, the, the entire calibration procedure hinges on that fact. Also, you'll see the uh, the stereo cable coming out of the uh, coming out of the sensor, and it goes into the back of the SWR meter into the sensor jack. So I'm going to move the uh, the camera around again so we can get a better look uh, and and zoom in. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. We're going to start with the SWR balance adjustment procedure as detailed in steps 88 through 93 in the assembly manual. Now this is a very crucial procedure as the overall accuracy of the meter hinges on balancing the bridge circuitry in the sensor unit. In order to perform this procedure, you'll need a plastic alignment tool such as the one I'm showing here. You can see that it has a metal insert so it will act as a straight slot screwdriver. Also notice that it is slightly recessed so it will fit over the trimmer capacitor's adjustment knob without slipping off. A word of caution. Don't use a metal tool as this will short to the sensor's chassis and may cause damage while transmitting. Okay, now on to step 88. We're going to set the meter into the SWR Cal mode. This will automatically select the needle meter face as well as the 20 watt reflected power measurement scale. It will also increase the digital reflected power readings precision to two decimal places. So to do this, touch the gear icon in the upper left hand corner of the meter face, then touch the box next to the SWR, now, SWR Null Cal setting in the lower left so that an X appears. And then click the Save button. So here we go. You'll know you're in the SWR Null Cal mode by the red label on the meter's face. Next, ensure your transmitter is set to transmit to 100 watts, as indicated in step 89. And then, finally, before we start the actual adjustment, uh, we're going to increase the gain of the 20 watt reflected power circuitry so that even the smallest change in reflected power will move the needle. Simply use the alignment tool to turn the 20 watt reflected power trimmer resistor three turns counterclockwise as viewed from the top, and I'll do that right now. Notice the little green LED is uh, lit in front of the uh, uh, the trimmer resistor that you're going to be turning. And uh, just be aware that the leftmost bank of uh, trimmer resistors is for the uh, reflected power. So I'm going to be turning this counterclockwise as viewed from the left three turns. There's one, two, three. All right. Okay, now we're ready to make the adjustment. So I'm going to pause the camera right now while I insert uh, the tool into the balance adjust hole on the uh, on the sensor. Okay, now you see that the uh, the alignment tool has been inserted into the balance adjust hole on the sensor. So I'm going to do a quick transmit and we'll see where we're sitting right now. Okay, you can see that the needle pegs over uh, over to the far right, so it definitely needs to be adjusted. So I'm going to adjust it now. I'm going to transmit in short bursts while I'm adjusting it. And you're going to watch the needle uh, move down. And then hopefully we're going to see it, it reach a null. And then as I keep turning, it'll come back up. That means you've passed the uh, point where you want to have it adjusted. So then you need to go back. So you kind of go rock it back and forth until you get a true null. And just be aware that this is very touchy. So you got to move very slow. All right, here we go. 
all right, here we come down. Very down, 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 down. All right, we're down to zero. And it started coming back up. So I want to be somewhere in the middle of where it was sitting at zero. All right, there's zero. All right, that's about the middle. So that's a good adjustment. Um, one thing to note, don't worry if, you, if you're not exactly at zero, although most, most of the time you will be, especially if you have a 50 ohm dummy load. Um, the, the, the most important part here is that you get a true null. That you're down, that the, that you're at the at the, the the minimum power. Zero, of course, is good. But even if it was like point zero two, point zero three, as long as it's at the null, then it's a good adjustment. All right, so that pretty much concludes the actual uh, SWR, uh, the the null uh, uh, procedure. Uh, in order to get the meter back into the into the regular mode, out of the SWR null cal mode. Uh, you just simply turn off uh, turn off the power and turn it back on. So we'll do that right now. All right, now we're going to move on to uh, the next section and uh, and and do the actual scale uh, scale calibrations for the twenty two hundred and two k scales for both forward and reflected. Before we proceed with the actual power scale calibration procedure, I want to talk quickly about how to determine the actual power output from your transmitter. The assembly manual provides three methods at the beginning of this section in descending order of preference. I'm not going to address these methods in detail as the manual's text covers everything you need to know to decide which method suits your individual situation. No matter which method used, Obtaining an accurate power output will obviously go a long way to ensuring an accurate calibration process. Now we're going to calibrate the 20 watt scale for both the forward and the reflected power. Uh, these are uh, detailed in steps 94 through 100 uh, in the assembly manual. To start with, set your transmitter so that it will transmit a 10 watt CW signal. Next, touch the gear icon in the upper left-hand corner of the meter's face and set it uh, to the following settings. So we'll do that right now. Bring up the settings. We want to set the meter source to forward power, the forward power scale to 20 watts, the reflected power scale to 20 watts, the power measurement type to normal, and the meter face type to bar graph and then save. Okay, next, uh, you want to take a look at the uh, green LEDs on the main circuit board and just ensure that they're in this, uh, in this configuration. Uh, they're lit uh, right next to the 20 watt uh, adjustment potentiometer for each the forward and reflected power. Now remember, the forward power bank is on the right hand side and the reflected power bank of, of resistors is on the left hand side. So we've got the 20 watt resistor highlighted for each one. So we're going to be doing the forward power first. Now I've set my transmitter to so that it transmits 10 watts but upon measuring uh, the output with my oscilloscope and calculating the actual power uh, I've got about 9.3 watts out. So I'm going to be adjusting the forward power scale to uh, 9.3 watts. So I'm going to insert the the alignment tool so that all right so now it's uh, engaged in the in the potentiometer's uh, uh, adjustment knob I'm going to transmit and so right now we've got 9.8 so I'm going to decrease this to 9.3 turning it clockwise when looking at the at the at, at the top to 9.3 All right, we're almost there. Mm 
Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to do the reflected power. In order to do this, we need to swap the uh, uh, the coax, uh, the two coaxial leads going into the sensor. So now we're going to have the transmitter transmitting into the output, and the dummy load is going to be connected to the input. This way, we're we're taking the the power out of the, out of the uh, transmitter and putting it through the reflected power circuits. All right, so stand by while I while I do this swap. Okay, so I've swapped the coax. Now, when we transmit, you'll notice that we're now getting power on the reflected power scale, and it's a little high. So we're going to set this also to 9.3 watts. Stand by. All right, so I'm uh, inserting the adjustment or the alignment tool into the uh, 20 watt reflected power. Potentiometer. I could find it. There we go. All right. Once again, it's too high, so we're going to be turning this thing clockwise as as viewed from the top to reduce the setting. All right. Here we go. And remember, we had turned this three turns uh, counterclockwise when we were doing the uh, null cal uh, adjustment. That's why it's just so high. So let's get this down to 9.3. Just a little bit more. Okay, I think that does it. All right, so that concludes the 10 watt um, uh, adjustment. So now we're going to move on to step 101. And we're going to change the uh, the forward power scale to 200 watts, and likewise uh, the reflected power scale to 200 watts. And in order to do this, just touch the bars themselves. So we touch the the forward power bar, and you see it changes to 200, and touch the reflected power, and now it changes to 200. All right, so uh, I'm going to pause the video real quick while I go and adjust my power output from my transmitter to 100 watts. And uh, I'll also do a measurement with my O-scope so that I can uh, accurately calculate the output power. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've adjusted the output of my transmitter. So it says 100 watts on the transmitter. But measuring it with my oscilloscope and doing the calculations, I come up with uh, 95 watts. So 95 watts is what we're going to set the, the meter to. Now remember, the coax is still uh, configured um, so that uh, it, it, the, the sensor is reversed. So we're going to be uh, uh, basically adjusting, <laughs> adjusting the reflected power first, and then we'll swap the sensor around and do the forward power. It doesn't really matter which, which order you do them in. So... Remember, the left bank of resistors is reflected power, so we're going to set the alignment tool in the 200 watt reflected power. You see it's uh, reading a little high, so I want to get that down to 95 watts. So turn it clockwise as viewed from the top. Here we go. 95. Let's get this one little bit more. All right, I'm going to say that's it. Okay, I'm going to pause once again while I swap the uh, coaxial cables uh, around on the sensor. Okay, so I've swapped the cables around. Now I'm ready to adjust the forward power scale for the 200 watts. So as I transmit, you can see uh, it's a little high, 126 watts. So I'm going to, once again, turn, turn the alignment tool clockwise to bring it down to 95 watts. All right. That looks close. All right. The next thing we're going to do, 
as uh, is adjust the 2000 watt scale. Now I don't have a linear amplifier, believe it or not, uh, so I'm going to be uh, adjusting the 2000 watt scale using a 100 watt output from my transmitter. So uh, uh, this is a point where uh, the procedure may differ for you. If you have a if you have a linear amplifier, it's uh, much more advantageous uh, to set it to transmit to 1000 watts. Uh, so that you're setting up in the in the center of the uh, of the scale. Um, however, at this at these power levels above you know anything above about 50 watts on the on the sensor, it's pretty linear. So uh, adjusting or calibrating the 2,000 watt scale at 100 watts uh, is still going to be very close, and you're still going to be within the the tolerance uh, uh, that's been advertised for the meter. So. Um, Without further ado, I'm going to change the scales all right, on both the forward and reflective power. And oh, by the way, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely know that uh, it doesn't really make any sense to calibrate a 2000 watt reflective power scale if you're having some uh, reflective power problems where you're up in the, uh, where you have to use a 2000 watt scale. Well then, uh, yeah, I don't think you have to worry about uh, your meter anymore. So, but anyway, we're just going to get it calibrated. Uh, so touch the bar, go to the 2K scale, the power bar, go to the 2K scale, touch the reflective power bar, and go to the 2K scale. And since the sensor is set up so that it's measuring forward power now, um, we're all set to go. You also notice that the two LEDs have changed. So now they're over on the, uh, the 2000 watt uh, adjustment potentiometer. We're going to do the forward power first. Let's get this set up. All right, it's inserted into the slot. It looks like we're pretty close, so it's 98. So I'm going to reduce it a few a few watts down to 95. All right. Now, uh, just uh, bear with me while I change the coaxial cables around, and I'll keep the camera running. Okay, the cables have been changed. Uh, this is pretty close as well, so let's just uh, adjust it down just a little bit. Once again, clockwise, since we're going down. And it looks like it. Okay, so there you have it. That's the, uh, that's the full calibration procedure. Once again, remember the uh, the SWR null cal uh, procedure, or the SWR balance adjustment procedure, as uh, as detailed in in the early steps of the uh, uh, of the calibration and testing section. I, I believe it's steps 88 through 93. Very very critical that you get that uh, that to a perfect null, so that the following steps, the ones we just completed here, uh, will be accurate. All right, this is WA4MCM signing off. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, I look forward to any comments. Uh, once again, you can uh, email me at uh, uh, don.friend at WA4MCMkits.com or uh, go to my website and there's a contact form. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, you know I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer any questions and respond to any comments. Thank you very much.